Before we begin this week's video, thank you so much to Jello for the doggy treat tier, Kiri Snowfox for the tennis ball tier, as well as the one time, and Ty Raccoon for the one time donation. Thanks so much, guys. If you'd like to pitch in and help, my coffee link is in the description of every video. Thanks in advance. Hey, happy Pride Month. Do you have a pride icon for your social media yet? Would you like to get one while supporting wonderful charities? Then be sure to check out hashtag Pride and Kindness 22. For as low as $5, you can donate to charities that support LGBTQ causes, as well as pick yourself up a wonderfully drawn piece of art by the artist running and giving their time to this group. If you're interested, be sure to check out the description for links to their Twitter, or check out their Discord server for more information. Anyways, on to today's topic. I leave for one weekend. One. And I come back to this. Don Oliver has a fursona? It has a bulge? My friends are simping over it? I had a good time camping, by the way. Thanks for asking. Heyo, everyone. Me should be barking here. Sorry this video took some extra days. I had some IRL stuff to catch up on. So this was an unexpected topic. Nonetheless, it seems like a silly thing to talk about. So let's do just that. I'm going into this blind and writing this portion before seeing the video. Then I'll watch the video and write the rest of the script. Then record this audio of me not seeing while now having seen it. So by the time you see it, I'll have seen it and... First and foremost, I'm gonna talk about who John Oliver is briefly, his prior involvement with furry, and this newest video that's making its way around furry spaces. So without further ado, let's dive on in. So who is John Oliver? John Oliver is a writer and producer known for things such as Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, The Lion King in 2019, and The Smurfs, apparently. That being said, what we're gonna be discussing today is Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, a show that has been going on since 2014, roughly eight years now. He came into the furry sphere on March 29th, 2020, when he ended an episode talking about <sighs> Rat erotica. This channel isn't worth it, dude. I want it. He showed a piece of art apparently titled Surfacing, which depicts, and I quote, two white rats leaping from the water. One of the rats is wrapped around the waist of the other in a pose of suggestive oral sex. Are they? Are they, though? Are they really jumping out of the water? I guess that's the beauty of Sword's work. Like all great art, it's open to interpretation, Oliver says. God, f Damn it. Anyway, that's not why we're here. We're here to discuss what happened while I was out of town, with our little Ollie boy getting art of an otter depiction of him. His persona? Maybe. I don't know, but uh, let's check it out. Hi there, Internet. I'm John Oliver. He's British? I, I know nothing about John Oliver, just a preface. I'm first gonna talk to you about furry. Oh, hey, that's me. That's us. Look at that. Yeah. Instead, I want to talk about a third candidate in the election, Candace Taylor. Oh, Candace, the anti-furry candidate. The one that got less votes than the average furry convention attendant. What a swell woman. She looks like she'd yell at me for not having her brand of prune juice on the shelf. She came out swinging in this debate appearance. Donald Trump won. He won. We have a fraudulent in the White House. How do people still believe Trump won? I'm I'm so over it, man. It's been two years. For the party spouting facts over feelings, y'all can't seem to let this loss go. I'm gonna put the Constitution first, and I'm gonna put Jesus first every single time. Separation of church and state? Never heard of her. And we're gonna fix our schools. We're gonna get rid of this anti-white racism. And we're gonna get rid of kindergarten teachers, men with beards and lipstick and high heels teaching our children. She's literally just spouting buzzwords at this point. But first, a little more about Candace Taylor. <laughs> this was her campaign boss. All right, let's see what's under the hood. Uh, I'm the one you've been waiting for. Okay, fair. The second messiah. This this woman thinks way highly of herself. The three campaign points on this bus are Jesus, guns, and babies, which is hilarious, you know? The, those are the, ah, uh, yes, the three genders. And people do like to see a fighter, don't they? Which is presumably why she posted this campaign video. The governor's race in Georgia has four establishment politicians. And then there's Candace Taylor. Oh, oh no. This is cringe. Is this shot on a 2011 Android? Why does it look so bad? If you are not aware, earlier this year, a bunch of conservatives fell for some very weird online rumors about what was happening in schools. Yeah, I already made a video about this. He's referring to the litter boxes and schools thing, but this has been coming up a lot lately, with furries being a scapegoat target to hate on trans youth or gay kids, because hating furries is quirky, fun, and cool. Like this clown, they're really saying the quiet part out loud now. Now, obviously, not all furry hate is veiled homophobia, but it's ridiculous to say that none of the hate is due to that. That is not what furries do. What they do do is they use regular toilets, wear elaborate fursuits, and many offer art commissions where you can get yourself done up as a sexy river otter at very reasonable prices. <laughs> oh, good gravy, I'm gonna have to censor that. Oliver, my boy, you can't just show the whole bulgy bulgy. I'm gonna get demonetized. F***ing yeesh, my guy. <laughs> why, why the nipples? Why the jorts? Who's responsible for this? I just want to clarify, I'm not shitting on the artist. It's actually really well drawn, just... What the f***? Candace Taylor. <laughs> 
An adult seeking office, remember, actually ran on this anti-furry issue. Yeah, no, she ran with this furry thing. Like, that was her whole basis. Targeting a niche community in hopes to gain extra votes. And, uh, it didn't work. Issuing 10 proposed executive orders, one of which instructed, no furry-related items will be worn in schools. Also tweeting, the furry days are over when I'm governor. This is hilarious. Oh my god. There's... She can't be serious, dude. There's no way she's serious. And the replies to that tweet are exactly the sort of response that you would hope for and expect from the furry community. One person said, if schools are for academics, not fairy tales, then how come people still teach supply-side <laughs> economics? To which I say, roasted. Well, several others simply posted furry cartoon asses. And if you... <laughs> absolutely had to reduce the furry presence online right down to its bones. Critiques of conservative economic theory and fuzzy butt shots really are the guiding principles of the whole movement. I... Shut up. So yeah, that's the uh, furry John Oliver thing. This video goes on for another 10 or so minutes, but they talk about rocks and continue roasting Candace Taylor. And while I'm here for that, that's not the topic of today's video. So what was the point of this video? Why did John Oliver get this commissioned. There's been a lot of celebrities who have used the furry community as a bit of a punching bag in the past few years, but I don't entirely think that's the case here. It's no debate that this was for a bit of shock factor. I mean, have you seen how big his co- I don't think he did it to sh** on furries though, or to use the community as a laughing stock. He mentioned furries multiple times and seems to credit us with being fairly down to earth, just members of a niche and conventionally weird subculture, doing for the most part no harm to people around us. A lot of people want to put furries in a box of basement dwellers and neckbeards who haven't seen the sun in months, but if all furries disappeared off the face of the earth, society would practically collapse. I'm not joking. This isn't a quip or an exaggeration. Do you know how many furries work in tech? There's a lot of them. It's not a hot take to say furries are legitimately everywhere, and odds are you work with one or more and don't even know it. And if you don't work with one, but you've watched this far, go ahead and get up and look in the mirror, buddy. So we're to the end of the video. This was pretty fun to talk about. I've really been enjoying the more lighthearted topics recently, from the Starbucks union video to this. That being said, I'm hoping to stay to the schedule, but truth be told, I've been having some pains when sitting at my desk to work on these videos. So that has very much slowed the process down. I'm saving up for a new office chair. So if you'd like to help with that, my coffee link is in the description below. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.